the number one rule for success is you have to love what you do. You have to love the process of the thing that you are doing. I've studied more successful people than most people. And the work that I've done on my YouTube channel, my website before that, that's been 20 years? When did I start doing this? It was 20, 22 when I started teaching how you can model success for your own success, right? That was through my website. And I'm, I'm 41 and a half now. So almost 20 years of doing this. 20 years of studying the most successful people and trying to dissect their lessons and bring them out for you to enjoy. And the number one rule that I found over and over and over and over and over again, the people who achieve at the highest levels, whether you're an entrepreneur, you're an inventor, you're an athlete, you are a musician, you are an artist, the number one rule is that you love the thing, the actual thing, not just the results of what you get, not just accomplishing the gold medal or getting the thing that's on your dream board, getting that house or getting that car, not that. The actual work so that it doesn't feel like work. You know that old expression of uh, find something you love and you never work a day in your life. And it's really true. I look at my calendar and I see what I've got to do uh, every day. I've got to make videos. It doesn't feel like work. You know, I, I don't look at this like how lucky am I to be able to make videos in the car and that's my work day. Right? Uh, a lot of people would step into my life and hate this. Great. I mean, you know, I would step into a lot of people's lives and hate that too. That's the challenge. When you're stepping into somebody else's life or you're, or you're helping somebody else build their dream and you don't actually like the process of what you're doing, you're, you're not going to be happy, <laughs> first of all, and you're not going to be successful either. You're always going to know that you're capable of more, doing something bigger, something better. And as long as you, you're stuck with your foot on the brake, you're going to know you're capable of more and just being too afraid to go chase down that potential. So the number one rule for success is you have to love what you're doing. I was doing a uh, presentation yesterday at Brendan Burchard's Influencer Summit, and it's probably the biggest event every year for people who want to become influencers, thought leaders, experts, get their message out to the world. You know, my kind of people. You got a message? You want to share it with the world? Let's go. I'm trying to solve the world's biggest problem, and, and I can't reach everybody, but you can. Like, you can reach people that I can't reach with your message, and so I love being able to try to help spread the techniques, the strategies, the, the motivation as well, the belief that uh, you have a powerful voice and getting that out there to the world. So yesterday, I'm, I'm doing my one hour talk with Brendan uh, and I shared my graphic of my growth over the years. And it's, it was really slow growth at the beginning. Very little results, uh, you know, 60 subscribers or whatever to 100 subscribers. You know, I'm on year five and I'm still still in the four figures of subscribers and it took a long time for me to get out of my own way it took a long time for me to get comfortable in front of the camera it took a long time for me to feel like my story meant anything had any kind of value I'm like why do you want to learn from me when i'm you could learn from oprah or uh, elon musk or bill gates or whoever the person is it took a long time and i've done now i don't know how many thousands of videos we're over ten thousand videos that, that we've made and so somebody asked him, well, like, how do you keep going? How, how, how did you keep going when you had no results at the beginning, when you weren't becoming famous or you weren't getting a lot of uh, feedback or recognition? And how did you make so many videos so consistently, right? If you average that out, that's, that's over a thousand videos a year. How do we make over a thousand videos a year? It sounds crazy just thinking about that. That's three videos a day, every day for 12 years. That's pretty crazy. How do you how do you maintain that level of consistency and not burn out where some people are burning out after six months of being on YouTube? Well, I love what I did. Right. I always focused on who I was serving instead of who I wasn't, because the who you're not serving game never ends. You know, if my main channel has three million subscribers, why doesn't it have four or five or seven or 10 or 40? Right. That game is never ending. But if you focus on who you are serving, who you are helping, who is paying attention, who is valuing from the product, services, content you're creating, it makes you feel better. Because focus on who you're not serving puts you in a, in a position of act, right? Of like, you're not good enough, people don't care, and it starts to take a, a knock on your self-worth. 
But when you focus on who you're actually helping and serving and that somebody got value from your your message today, your product, your service today, it gives you extra motivation to keep going. Like, how do you persevere? It's because you feel like you're doing something that matters. If you woke up and felt like today didn't matter, you're not likely to stay very consistent, right? It's like, if nobody's, nobody's gonna watch, nobody's gonna care, nobody's gonna buy my thing, well, what reason do you have to get up and go work on that thing? You're probably gonna quit. But when you feel like it matters, even if it's to one person, that what you're gonna make today will matter, will mean something to even just one person. If you actually felt that, you're gonna show up completely differently than if you felt like it didn't matter. So I always focus on who I was serving instead of who I wasn't. And then the second part to that was, I actually enjoy the process of doing it. You know, so when I see filming day on my calendar, or when I see interview day on my calendar, it, it's not work. It's not like, oh, okay, I gotta go to work and then I'm gonna have fun afterwards. When I get asked that on a on podcast, how many hours do you work? Or how do you how do you stay so consistent on the content? I respond with, well, I'm here talking to you on your show. Is this work for you? Because it's not work for me. This is fun for me. It might be considered work, I guess, to it's my business. It's it's part of business time, but it doesn't feel like work. The days fly by because I'm enjoying the actual work of what's going on. I enjoy the process. And I think that's the key. And when you find the people who who have had tremendous success, you'll find that they actually enjoy the thing that they're doing and that the days fly by. And it's a good sign when it's not, you know? Like if your day is not flying by, if you're stuck and you're struggling doing something, chances are that's the wrong thing for you. That's the thing that you need to give up on as soon as possible. And maybe that means you need to quit on the whole business. Like if the whole business is giving you nothing but stress and problems and you don't want to go in and you don't want to work on it anymore, maybe you picked the wrong business. Maybe you, you did what most people do is they pick an opportunity just because they think it's a hot business because it's a trending uh, industry to be in for this year. But if you don't actually ever like the thing, you're going to quit on it and you should quit on it so you can go find something that you actually love. Right? So if you pick the business just for the opportunity, because you think you're going to make a quick buck, you're going to hate your life. Get out of it ASAP. Or it might mean there's just little bits inside the business that you don't want to do. And maybe you have to do it. And you have to do it for now until you can afford to hire someone to do it. Or maybe it just doesn't have to get done. You know, maybe, maybe that's not required. You know, there's some things that have to get done that you might not enjoy, right? Filing taxes. <laughs> Most people don't enjoy filing taxes. Most entrepreneurs that I've met do not enjoy filing taxes as, as a part of their business. But um, if you don't want to be uh, in trouble with the government, then you have to file your taxes. You know, it's an important part of being an entrepreneur. And so maybe at the beginning you do it yourself, uh, but as quickly as you can, you, you want to hand that off to somebody else to do. Let them do it because they love it and they're great at it. And it allows you more time, but also just mental energy because it's not just about the hours worked. When you are working on something that you do not enjoy doing at all, that two hours feels like 20 hours. Can you relate? You know, like doing two hours of work that you hate feels like it took an entire week to do of, of mental energy versus when you're actually having fun doing it and it doesn't feel like work, you could keep going and you're, you're producing so much and time just seems to fly by. So use that negative time as a filter. So when you feel that way, that you're not happy, you look at your calendar and you're not happy about what's coming up. That's a, that's a great time for the awareness to shift. Something needs to shift. If you look at your calendar, you can do this homework right now. Look at your calendar, see what's coming up in the next two weeks. Is it exciting for you? Are you pumped to go do it? Or are you, are you dreading it? or apathetic towards it, like you could take it or you could leave it. And if there's nothing that's exciting in your calendar, nothing that scares you in your calendar in a good way, like it's growth opportunity, then you need to add something in. And if you're constantly dreading or hating the stuff that is in your calendar, you need to get out of that because you will never win doing work that you hate. People say that, you know, do whatever it takes. You won't, not consistently, not for a, a sustained period of time. You could do anything in a short amount of time, but over, over years, decades, you won't. You won't stay consistent on doing something that you hate. You'll never win because you're going up against people who love it. 
whatever market you're in, if you don't love it and it's just a strategy for you and somebody else, your competition loves it, they, they, they live it, they eat it, they breathe it, they bleed it, they love it. That's them. And for you, it's just a strategy and you hate it. Who do you think is going to win in the long term? It's not going to be you. But meanwhile, there is something you could dive into that you could love. The actual work, not just the results, but the actual work. And you have to find it. I've studied so many successful people over the almost 20 years now, 19 and a half years of doing this. And the reason why I went to non-entrepreneurs as well was because it's all the same lessons that success in athletics and success in music and success in art and success in every field it still comes down to you need to love the process, love the work. And if that's you and you love what you're doing, you have to keep going and find a way to make it work or you'll regret giving up on it. And if you're the opposite and you hate what you're doing and you think it's good strategy, the best strategy is to get out and go find something that you love because that's where you will win. If you want another Evan Rant video that just might give you the confidence you need, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. When you are accountable to other people, you are more likely to follow through.